Hello guys, welcome back to Aero Conto in August 2022 update. On the last time, hmm, Dick, uh, I mean Dickens, huh? A cowboy, very mm, yummy. Yeah, this this body, wow, so big, almost as big as bottle or chop or whatever. He's yummy. He's hot. That's our point, right? So let's get to know him more. Aside from me, it's the same. So, okay. Let's skip. Took me longer than expected, but I'm pretty sure there won't be any leaking in Aero Control from now on. Ew. Uncle in your tank once in a while, will ya? It's dirtier than a horse's butt when it got diarrhea. Th that's it? I thought it would be more complicated with socialized tools and leak detectors, like my plumber told me. <laughs> All he is trying to scam you for money. All he earned as professional as he claims, I don't know. By the way, I better hit the shower and get back to my workshop. These cow brushes ain't gonna get done by themselves. You can make cow brushes? Damn, you little Rory can do everything, can't you, Dickens? Yeah! A homo growing up in the countryside. Sometimes you have to learn a thing or two in order to get food in your mouth, or a hair stuck to lie down at night. If I'm bad at doing chores, it must be because I like men. If I'm good, it would be better when I wasn't a faggot. That's how it is down there. So I wear my bad off to prove that I ain't no wimpy freak. So people wouldn't look at me in the face and split on the floor every time. That sounds horrible. No wonder why you were being so defensive when it comes to your security. Getting treated badly for being gay? You must really hate that awful living hell, don't you? Is that the reason why you moved to Aero Condo? To get away from those people? I do love my hometown, and I like working on the farm. But if they don't want my face around, I'll just get the job done and go. I ain't blaming them for all the way they treat me. I mean, you can't change everybody's mind in a flash and force them to accept the way you live. You have to give them time. <laughs> Who knows, maybe one shiny day they wake up and realize that queer people are just people all along. Until the day comes, I'll just drive from here to the farm and back and be a good example for the community. I admire you, Dickens. Despite the stigma and hatred dragging you down, you still get back and grow up even stronger. Things ain't changing on their own, pal. You have to make it happen yourself, or else we would just stay in one place. Blah. Alright, if I heard but more flatter coming from your mother mouth, I'll die from the cringe. I have to get those brushing poles done before what winter comes. You should also get back to work, pal, instead of staying here smelling my armpits. I, I, I didn't do it on my paws. It just came in my nose, I swear. Oh, Freko, I didn't know that. You have smelling footage, huh? Well, we are even. Fireplace. After a long day on the farm, all Dickens wants to do is sit by the fireplace, drink milk, and listen to country. Dickens? Are you there? Hmm, it seems like he's not here at the moment. Wait, what? What? Dickens, don't tell me you are a, a werewolf. No, bear wolf. A bear wolf. <laughs> a bear where? Eh, where bear? Whatever. What are you? And why do I have the feeling that I'm being watched by the bear? Oh, is that the the stuffed bear behind you? I know I shouldn't judge how other people decorate their house, but if I see a bear standing creepily in my apartment, I swear to go. 
What the actual what? Damn you freaking Dickens! My heart almost fell out! <laughs> Scared the hell out of y'all, didn't I? Why on earth are you wearing that best cuffs and going around the house like a psychopath? I know what you hunt, you keep, but that bear is dead. Let it rest in peace on your corner already, for heaven's sake. No, no, no need to throw a hissy freckle. This earned real bear is my fursuit. Fursuit? Like, oh, are you a furry? <laughs> your fursuit? Don't tell me you are. <laughs> a freaking furry trash? Heck yeah, I am. On one hand, I truly want to give you a lecture right now. But on the other hand, I'm surprised to know that you are a furry. Hope that Ernie gave you the heart attack the second time, Paul. It will be a pain in the bike carrying you to the hospital in my fursuit. Talk about fursuits. I have a few friends who are into furry. They told me it would cost about 1,000 to 10,000 for an ordinary fursuit. I was like, what? 10,000 just for one animal bodysuit? Unreal. It's true though. Depends on how complex your fursuit looks. What kind of fabrics and furs? Any other special effect like shaking tail, waving ears, stuff like that. Phew! Mine cost me two milk trucks. A year and a half to complete. But it's all worth it. Why are the furries I know are always super rich in a questionable way? No offense, but I never understand the concept of furry. I mean... Pretend to be some cartoonish animals to socialize? Don't you find it a little... odd? Or is there some sort of wealthy entertainment that I'm too broke to understand? <laughs> there are a lot of reasons people choose to become furries. As for me, it's just simply because I enjoy being an animal. I admire those creatures. They follow their instinct without questioning because they know they're alright. Yeah. Unlike people, animals live their lives to the fullest, wide and free. They never care about what others think. You know what I put my first suit on? I feel so powerless that I can't do anything I want. I can bang a tower, shoot a river, shoot on those bots, then proceed to masturbate. Sounds not, but that's what I like. Furry is more than a hobby. It's escapism. A world where I can be happy with my kind of people. To be me. So, furry is the way that allows people to express themselves? Through the personal, yes. You can understand it that way. I still do not quite get it yet, but if it makes you happy, I fully support you being a furry. As long as you don't sneak around my back to scare me. I'm cool. Oh, I ain't seen no scary though. It's supposed to be hot, don't you see? I find it harder to wear than being hot. If only you could take that suit off a little bit. Like this. Now that's what I call hot. Furries, huh? Hmm, for my first owner, what should I be? What do you think? I'm not into furry that much, but I'm into Harris Bistority. <laughs> Just wanna let you know. Truck. I know that truck is Dickens' property, but it is not allowed in Aero Conto at all. Great. Just great. Uh, um, uh. uh oh. Someone's about to get mad enough to swallow a horn toad backward. You didn't bring that truck to the garage as you promised. You even got it polished. Look how shiny it is. I can't even see my angry face on it. Dickens, what is this behavior? We had a deal. <laughs> we did, but I thought you would change your mind when you saw how stunning this fella is. 
Looks like it didn't work out well. Why do you have to make my life miserable, Dickens? I don't get it. What's so special about an old baby blue track that you keep it in your room no matter what? <sighs> you know, mother never had faith that I could become a farmer. So he ain't teach me anything. The only thing he taught me was how to drive this pickup truck. Another backstory time before the elimination. Classic. <laughs> then mother got into alcohol and gambling. Those things did him dirty. And eventually one sunny day, he was gone. What? Your father? I knew something wrong would happen, but... Damn. Yeah. This old baby blue truck is what I have left of him. Although he was a bad dad, I still love and respect him. I guess that is why I keep attached to it. Look, I'm sorry about your father. I don't know why this truck means so much to you now. Don't be. He is in a better place now. This truck is the only thing in my past that I don't want to let go of. You understand it, right, Paul? I do, Dickens. I really do. But it doesn't change the fact that your track will damage our building structure. And we need to get it out of here, except... Ew. How could you unshed a tear after I put my heart and shared a freaking touching story with you? Are you even a human being, Paul? I missed the part where that is my problem. <laughs> Come on, Paul. How can I sleep at night without his strong, tough chip? The vivid color on his frame. I mean, look at the tailpipe. Just say you have mechanophilia. <gasps> oh, I don't even know how to spell that word, let alone what you are talking about. Seems like you do to me. But I'm not going to dig deeper into how you put a key in an ignition kind of thing. And since you're such a stubborn idiot, I guess I have to compromise. How about this? First, we will dismantle the trunk out of here but lift its frame. The part you like most in your room. Then, you can buy a new frame to assemble its engine in the parking garage. It will divide most of the weight out of your room. But you can still keep the look. That way, you can have the outside of the car as a memento in the house. And everything inside, it will be in another car in the garage, free to drive if you want. Everybody is happy, what do you think? Oh! Dad, and have bad. And since I can't come up with any better idea, let's do it your way, Frago. Glad that you've made the right decision, Dickens. I'm sure you then in heaven must be very proud to have a son like you. No matter what you did with his pickup truck. Heaven? <laughs> oh, mother and dad. He just took all the money and ran away. So your father is still alive? Cool, I feel less guilty now. Make an ophelia, huh? Wow, this is rare. Very, very rare to see in nowadays. And I'm pretty curious. Aside farming, Dickens also loves to fix things around the house by himself. Sometimes he makes crafts for his farm as well. Look at you all packed up. Back to the farm, aren't we? Yeah. I need to bring those brush poles for the cows before winter comes. Could have something to keep them entertained in the barn from freezing with her, or else? They will get stressed and stop making milk. Yeah, I know. I spent some of my childhood living with my grandpa on his farm. I know how hard winter can be in the countryside. Whoa! Hard to believe that this fancy uptown guy used to live on the farm. Worst days in my life. If it wasn't for my mom forcing me to go there, I would never choose to live in such a boring small chicken grass surrounded by mosquitoes, bugs, and full of hen's poop. 
Oh, please, you said as if the countryside is a bad place. At least there must be some good things that happened while staying there for a year. How to have good memories when you were... <laughs> you know what? Come to think of it, there was one girl next door I made friend with. Yeah! A friend, now we're talking. More to tell, how did you two meet? A girl who had ginger hair and bright grey eyes. If I recall correctly, her name was Wendy. <gasps> Wendy? Yeah, you know her? N no. <laughs> Stop assuming that all the people from small towns always know each other. The stereotype is getting old. Go on, how did you two meet? Well, her family was a business partner of my grandpa. They usually brought her along when they came to my grandpa's house for business and let us play with each other. When he was such a rebel playdate, she was strong and fierce, but also stubborn, and always did things as she pleased, even talked back to adults while getting scolded, like a boy. <laughs> a rebel, huh? Sounds more like a badass to me. With that character, a bird should be going places someday. But I guess she didn't have many friends because of that. Those kids didn't like her. She was too... different. Yeah. Right. Being abnormal and different is like a sin for what those people down there. Ain't nobody loves a person who doesn't follow any society standard. Especially when you are a girl. Poor Wendy, to be left out and distant like that. I think she was very lonely and hurt. Luckily, she got your butt around to play with, right? Indeed, I enjoyed Wendy's company. She told me stories about farming and animals in her barn. Sometimes, she sang some old country songs for me. Oh, did I tell you Wendy was a yodeler? She was pretty good. Every time she sang an old folk piece with freestyle yodeling in the middle, I thought my heart skipped a beat. Oh, puppy love, same leader. The way you talked about Wendy, you must feel very hard for what that pretty girl on your paw. Me? No, oh goodness, no. I, I mean, even if I had feelings for her, we were still too young for love at the time. She was my best friend to me, and I wish we could stay that way forever. But sadly, things didn't always work out the way we wanted. What happened? My grandpa passed away. My parents had no interest in the farm, so they sold it and moved back to the city. Without grandpa, I didn't have any reason to come back there anymore. There were no smartphones or social media back then nor the internet in the middle of nowhere, so we lost contact just like that. Uh, um, uh. Understandable. Sorry for all your pop out though. Don't be, it was about to happen sooner or later. Besides, isn't that how all childhood friendships are supposed to end? One day you will hang out with each other for the last time, and neither of you will know about it. Yeah. Not only childhood friendships, sometimes that is how all kinds of relationships end. I wonder what Wendy is doing right now. She always wants to be a farmer and on a big farm when she grows up. I don't know if she has achieved that dream. Damn, somehow I want to meet her again. Then go and meet her. What do you mean, Dickens? Go find her. You are grown but now. No one can stop you from doing whatever you like. B but how, Dickens? I don't have any single clue nor any information about Wendy. Then we will get there and look for some. Tell you what, why don't you go on the road trip with me to the countryside? 
After I'm done with setting up this brush post for all the calls, we can drive around to see if we can find anything about your call. We can give it a shot. Since it's a small town, people know everybody and everything happens there. And I thought I was the only one being stereotyped. But a road trip with you doesn't sound so bad. It just reminds me. I just don't understand why most of farming games, they have to be grandpa's farm. Let the protagonist go there when their grandpa passed away. So mysterious. Dickens has a lot of hobbies, and he always wants to show off his pursuits to people. <coughs> Guess who's back to Aerocondo, Paul? Dickens, where have you been? You just disappeared like a whole week. Why didn't you answer my calls? I was worried sick. Oh, Do you worry about me? That means I'm your huckleberry now, am I? Sorry for not picking up, Paul. Uneasy to get any signal when you drift on the stream deep down in the woods. The woods? What were you doing there? Hunting? Fishing is the best season. This time of year is when those large mounds begin spawning, so they are everywhere. Catching them was as easy as rolling off a log. Almost forgot, here's some for y'all. Oh, I received three fish. Um, thank you. But I still want cock more. For little old me? Oh, you shouldn't have. Look how huge they are. Must have been difficult for you to take the bit out of their enormous mouths. <laughs> no, these fellas were so hungry that they just got naked and stood in the middle of the stream and they kept coming at me, sucking and getting caught one after another. No rod or bed is needed. The biggest catch of this trip was 17 two pounds, but they got a big belly, so I let it go. 17 pounds? That is the most accurate grams in the metric system for the rest of the world. That fish could set your name in the record. Why didn't you keep it? The big belly could be full of eggs, Frego. I returns it to the water. The fish will make more fish, so we can catch even more in the years to come. That's very thoughtful of you, Dickens. I'm impressed with your knowledge of this field. <laughs> Still managed to take a picture of that fish though. Here, I'll show you. Oh, <laughs> I just thought you just said that no rod was needed. So, I see the tip of the rod. Clearly, a big head of the rod over there. Hmm. Big, right? I think I might get a chance to put my name on the big catch list with this fella. Yeah, the head. Right there. Pretty big. Is there a ruler tattoo on your leg? Yeah! So I can make sure the fish as soon as I get it in my hand. Smart, doesn't it? That is the most redneck thing I have ever seen in my life. You are truly passionate about this thing, aren't you? Yeah! Damn right, haha! <laughs> Funny, I never thought I'd like to go fishing. If I was still the old me back then, I wouldn't dare to go near the water, let alone taking my rod going around. The old you? What do you mean? <sighs> Not proud to take a trip down of memory lane about this, but when I was little, my dad used to throw me in the metal troughs, filled with water and locked me up until he heard me screaming many, many times. Was he trying to drown you? What kind of father would do that to their own child? That was freaking inhumane. <laughs> he said he wanted to teach me how dangerous water could be. I better keep myself stay out of it, but he got what he wanted. I was terrified of water. The feeling of not being able to breathe haunted me for so many years. But when I became a new person, 
I didn't know what I was at first, so I tried out a lot of stuff to see what it stick. Even things that I'm so scared of, uneasy, but I made it. <laughs> I wanted to see what I'd become if I shaped myself by my own will, not for what people told or did to me. And you can see the result. I was reborn again with a new body, and I'm happy as ever. Guns, furry, and the LGBTQIA plus communities helped me and played a big part in the process. That's why I'm always proud of and committed to them. You have been strong for so long, Dickens. I'm happy that you found a new life to live just for yourself. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Don't know what will await me ahead, but I'm sure I'll enjoy every minute of it. Just don't do anything crazy with the conjure that got me fired. Hmm. I thought you ate like on jokes. That's a lot of question. He then threw him in, into the water, just like a lion throwing his baby off the cliff. And said, nah, Sibenya, something like that. How oh, he would be a funny dad. What is so special about the truck that Dickens keeps insisting on keeping it? The weather is frightening. The thunder and lightning seems to be having their way. But as far as I'm concerned, it's a lovely day. Why? Cause today is the day the pickup truck in your room will be torn down and moved out of Aero Condo for good. Isn't that wonderful, Dickens? <sighs> yeah, splendid. Hey now, what a long face there, cowboy. You and I both agreed with this decision, did we not? There is no turning back now, mister. So why don't we just execute the task in the most delightful wa- <laughs> Shut up, crackhead! I know you are trying to be positive and stuff, but it really pissed me off. I'm gonna do it, but at least let me do it with my own feelings. With all the morning and sadness if I want to, okay? Uh, uh, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to be rude or sarcastic. Somehow I feel like I was out of my character today. Strange. This car is a very meaningful dear thing to you. You have every right to express your true feelings. No need to hold back because somebody says so. I'll be here, fully supported and keep my mouth shut in case I say something unforgivable out of the blue. Hmm. <sighs> I don't know, Paul. Guess I got overwhelmed a moment there. Freco, can I ask you a strange question? Of course, I'll try my best. Imagine you have a car, the one that you love and are similar with. Then you move the engines inside to another car, leaving your car empty by the outside. Which one would be your car? What makes a car a car? Is it the engine inside now belonging to another car? Or the ideas and images of it living in your mind? I need something strong to make my irises wide enough for this kind of question, which we can't do here. To be honest, I don't know. I'm not a car person to have that kind of knowledge. But you are a person. Huh? What? Now I'm confused. Is there some kind of metaphor you are trying to say, Dickens? No. <laughs> I just want to know your opinion about the subject. It has nothing to do with my truck or the situation we are in. Just curious. I think both are important. The outside is the one that I see every day and know. Even though I can't see the inside, it's what I paid for. Just like the shoulders should match them hips, they should be matched too. I will change the outside of the new car to the shape of the old one or whatever I saw fit. So if you're your car, then should you change the outside 
Too much of what you feel is thought as well, Paul. I don't see why not, if I have that kind of money to do it. Oh, I see. What if the transition was so major that it can only do once and there's no turning back? Now that's pretty tricky question. As for me, I can't speak for anybody else but if I have to make that kind of decision, I would have to spend a lot of time thinking about it to make the right choice that I won't regret later. If it's really what I want and willing to take, then I would go for it sooner or later. It's just a matter of time, which I got plenty of if it was a car, obviously. Good call, Paul. Now I feel much better. Suddenly, I think so deep with all those philosophical questions and stuff. What are you on right now, seriously? Guess I'm not the only one who was out of the character today. Alright, people don't come here for being lectured and getting scolded, Dickens. Better get into work, strip off your clothes and get ready for action. That's what we should be doing next. Um, did Franco just speak with us? Like, well, you know, something to happen next. Oh, wait, right there. The blue cap and fishing lots over there. They are just like in Harvest Moon. The cap that the protagonist wears. And a different color fishing lots that you need to upgrade in different level. Iron, copper, silver, and gold. I was just speaking of the farming games. And this is what I meant. Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral. Like, if you remember the song that na 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 yeah that's it oh my this is the song that protagonist sing with sang with some girl in his memory like in his childhood just like freckle story oh my what a nostalgia um Okay, thank you so much for watching. See you again on the next video and hope you enjoy their grandpa's farm. <laughs> bye bye. If you want to watch more videos, so hit like, share, and follow me, okay? <laughs>